Hey everyone, Jay from Dark Wolf Knives. Uh, well, we're doing some heat treating today while I'm waiting for the forge to uh, heat up to a good 1475 degrees or 1500 or close to that. Uh, right now it's at 965 degrees. During the meantime, while that's doing its thing, remember it's going to have to uh, uh, do this three times, so. In the meantime, we're going to make a, uh, a large knife. Uh, this here is a piece of two inch wide by quarter inch thick, uh, 5160 spring steel. We're going to make a great big giant freaking dagger. Uh, we're going to do overall at about 13 and a half inch from point to tip, point to butt end. Scribe it right there, and let me put in some lines while I got the chance here. Uh, I want this right at about one inch wide on the caliper thing here so that when I etch this I get a nice center line let's see how we do oops sorry about that folks now we got some idiot outside with his truck trying to rev it up Obviously, it goes faster while it's sitting in the driveway, right? Anyways. That's pretty good right there for center line. Let's flip it over and do the other side real quick. Paper label. Irritating as shit. Of course, these calipers aren't really designed for scratching steel or anything like that, I don't think. So, we just gotta make do with what we got. Alright. So, one inch by a quarter inch, I gotta figure out my measurements for my machine over there. Well, not really, not yet. Uh, let me see. Seven point one two five degree. So, 7.125. That's for our bevels. So we get a one inch bevel on each side for quarter inch thick bar stock, uh, two inch wide, whatever. So this will be ground on both sides rather than just chisel ground on one side. Let's see, where are we at? No, the oven is now at 1051. So, let's get out the angle grinder as soon as I get my protective gear on. And we'll slice this piece off. I've got a welding hat that I put on to keep the uh, sparks out of my hair. And I really hate getting metal dust in my head.
hair and my scalp. Leather welding apron, good for sparks. Of course, it's got a few burn marks in it pretty badly from grinding. I really should be wearing my respirator, but today we will put it aside just for video purposes. And I wear a full, excuse me, full face shield. Works better than goggles. Well, for me anyways. Goggles always seem to steam up really easily. Alright. And for cutoff grinder, we're just going to use a little cheap Harbor Freight 4.5 inch angle grinder with some 40 grit cutoff discs. Hang on to your buttholes. Alright, there we go. Give it a little bit of water to cool it down. And after everything fell off the uh, desk here from the vibrations, next we're going to go right over here to Mr. Grinder. Now, I don't really have a pattern drawn or anything, so we're going to kind of freehand this. Oops. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. should be good right there. So, let me plug in my light here. I got a little, a little USB light thing that I set up yesterday. So basically what I got set up for a light, let me move this here real quick. There's just some flexi lights. Uh, just some USB flexi lights. Real nice little things I just connected to a, taped onto a brass rod. I stuck on the machine and ran an extension cord up to the plug. So it gives me good light source right here on my on my work that I'm gr grinding on. So I can actually see my lines and everything. It's, it's really bad when I excuse me. When I get up here to do the bevels and things like that, I can't see the edge of my grind lines. So that's what that's for. I've got a big old fluorescent overhead, but it just doesn't put the uh, light exactly on my work surface here. Alright, let's get you stood back up. 
hopefully. Maybe, maybe not. Alrighty. Hope you folks can see that okay. Alright, let's take my ever popular Sharpie and not be able to see my pattern. That's what happens when you use blue dye them. Need some green or some something like that. So basically I want to handle about that long there. Uh, you can see that line there fairly decently. Uh, maybe actually about that long. And on the blade we're going to do something fun. I'm going to make this like a recurve style dagger or something. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not. Anyways, let's get a belt and get started. Uh, I got some new belts in the mail the other day from eBay. Uh, after 60 grit. nice and cheap, but that doesn't always mean nice and good, so we're going to find out here real quick. This here's a nice bundle of about 20 of them. They don't seem to carry as much grit as my other ones. Hmm. These are just standard crappy ass aluminum oxide, but I needed some more belts, some nice cheap ones. Merca something. 60 grit, at least I got the nice directional arrows on it, so that's always a plus. I sure as hell don't feel like X weight or even Y weight. They're real thin. Not as thin as a J flex or anything like that. A decent butt joint. Alright. Well, let's give this a whirl and see where we go.
Now, these are some absolutely crappy belts. I mean, for light cutting, sure, maybe, but they're just garbage. They definitely weren't worth spending the money on. That's for damn sure. So, I'm going to go back to my decent belts that I got from True Grit. They have a way better gritty surface. And I haven't had any problems with one of these yet. I mean, they cost, you know, a dollar more a belt or something, but definitely more than makes up for it. So, I'll be back to you in a minute.
All right, folks, here's what we got so far. If you ask me, it's one hell of a freaking dagger. Great feel in hand. Might want to narrow this waist a little bit here. Yep, a real good feel to that. Well, let me know what you think of that. I'll do the bevels on it a little bit later. Just wanted to get the profile of it. Makes a good small mini sword. <laughs> Alright everybody, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care now.